Hi, I'm Dale. I'm part of the product team at ClickHouse. I'm going to talk about building real-time applications with materialized views. And this is quite an introductory talk for materialized views. So for you, those of you that are a little bit more experienced, bear with me. And hopefully there's still something for all of you. So um, I think everybody knows that ClickHouse is pretty fast. But let's setting the scene. If I want to build an application with real-time analytics, uh, ClickHouse's kind of sweet spot is fast queries. So we obviously are very fast, and we also support high concurrency. So that makes it ideal for building applications with real-time analytics. And uh, But we're particularly fast when we have a filter, so uh, when it's in the ordering key, and it's part of the ordering key. And that's the kind of access properties that you see in an analytics application, whether it be Grafana or a custom application that you've built. Users will apply filters, and they'll drill down and a lot of people spend their time trying to make sure that their ordering key is as optimized as possible to match uh, the access patterns. Now, obviously, you can build real-time analytics on other databases. Postgres is a fantastic technology, even Elasticsearch to a certain point. But, but obviously, this is, ClickHouse is really targeting this case where you have hundreds of billions of rows and very large data sets. So if you were tasked with building a Google Analytics, for example, ClickHouse would probably be the ideal technology for that. And obviously, you always need a nice UI. So uh, I've built some applications re recently, and I'll go through the process of, of uh, some of those materialized views that we used and show you the end result. So as I said, ClickHouse is fast, and it's built for concurrency. So it meets a lot of the properties that we need. But there are always limits. So some queries just need to scan all of the data and perform a linear scan. And those are particularly expensive, and you can't optimize the ordering key for every single access pattern. So many of you probably have queries which sometimes if they go outside the ordering key, then you revert to a full table scan, which ClickHouse is still pretty fast. There's some numbers on a scan that on here on a query that I'll run in, in, in a minute moment. Um, and that's still in the order of billions of rows per second. But if you want to load the landing page on something like an application that you've built, Typically, the user hasn't applied a filter yet, and you're forced to do a full table scan. So we need something else. Now, there are other tools in the kind of ClickHouse box. There's something called projections. And there's some differences between projections and materialized views that we can discuss at the end and when you should think about using each. And we've got a blog coming out that will describe this in detail. So materialized views are not the only tool in the box that you can use to solve this problem of when your access patterns don't necessarily match your ordering keys. OK. So um, just as a, a, a kind of a recap, what are materialized views? Um, well, they're important to think of them as just an insert trigger. So once you start thinking that materialized views are st storing data, you'll start getting confused about their behavior. So they're a little different than those that you may have experienced in Postgres. They are effectively just a trigger that's assigned to a table. And when blocks of data are inserted to that table, the query executes on that block of data and sends the results off to another table. Now, the rows that came into that target table still go off into the original table that you were targeting. But effectively, you are just executing queries on blocks of data as it comes in. I'll go through some animations in a moment to make this a little bit clearer. And you're just executing the queries on these rows and capturing the result. Now, they don't store the data itself. Um, now, why is this useful? Well, it can be used to summarize data amongst a few other things. I would say that materialized views are not just limited to this use case. They're a lot more flexible than that, and I'm sure some of you are using it for other tasks. But they can massively improve query performance. And I think one of the members of the audience asked, when should you use them? That, the art of kind of choosing which parts of your queries to target are the aggregations of your queries. They can be sub-queries, or they can be queries that are loading landing pages. But if you're using applications specifically, typically you're looking to speed up certain aggregations, a certain group by aggregations. And the whole principle here is that we're basically moving work from uh, insert, sorry, that should be the, the reverse of that. We're moving work from query time to insert time by pre-computing pre our result sets. So that is a very bad misspelling, sorry about that. Uh, so we're moving work from query time to insert time. So let's actually look at uh, like an example for this. So this is a data set, which I think is a great data set. Uh, unfortunately, right now, you can't download this data set. You have to pay some money to export this data set from BigQuery. 
Um, they, it is available in BigQuery, but it's the Python package download. So everyone feel, everyone I'm sure here knows Python. Even my seven-year-old actually is learning Python at this point. So I feel like the high everybody in the world is a Python developer. Um, but this packet data set is every time you install a package, uh, a Python package, you do a pip install, they record a row, and that goes off into BigQuery. And you can pay to query this. Uh, we've actually exported it as of August this year and put it on an S3 bucket for free so you can download it and use it for yourself for free if you want to. So I, if, you, if you want that link, I should have included that link. I can provide that link, but that's about 600 billion rows. So it's a pretty decent sized data set. And the intention here is to take this data set, make it publicly available in a ClickHouse instance, and then provide an application that everyone can query to provide analytics on their Python packages. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Hopefully, let's see how we get there. So this is actually the data. Um, should be pretty clear what this is. Uh, hopefully, you can see this. You can see the Python version, the project names. This one's actually requests, the URL download, and there's some other properties here which are interesting. And I think the end goal of any application would be to join this with some other interesting data sets like GitHub for the actual projects themselves. So this is kind of the first iteration, and this was just what I built last week. But um, hopefully, we can evolve this and, 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 make it, and make it public and open source. So let's just go through a quick example. Now I'm going to focus on materialized views for counting. It's the simplest case. There are more complicated cases. Okay, so we're just going to go through the simple case, but there's a more complicated case which I'll, I'll, I'll refer to. So we have this table, PyPy, lots of fields, and we're going to show them all. And it's a simple merge. It's a simple project uh, merge tree, and we're going to assume that by normally we're going to want to filter by project and timestamp. I think most people are going to want to filter down on a specific. Python package, and then probably apply a time range. So that's a decent stab at a first, at an order by key. Uh, and we have a row coming in, and that goes into our PyPy package. Now on the right, I've created a materialized view. The materialized view is called PyPy downloads underscore MV, and it's going to send its results, the results of its query, to a new table called to PyPy downloads, and then we define the query. This is the syntax that we prefer. You may see like a, a roller, a, a, a hidden table syntax where it puts a dot notation and hides the table. I prefer this explicit syntax. I think it's a lot clearer. Uh, the rolled table, table, table syntax has some advantages in that you can query the materialized view and it will automatically send it to uh, the actual target table for you. But this to me is a lot clearer and it's easier to maintain and easier to understand what's going on. So. Uh, this query itself is just counting by project and doing a group by. So this row gets aggregated against this, executes against the query, and then goes to our table, which is our target table. PyPy downloads here. You can see it's quite similar in its definition, but we just have a project, a, a project, a count, which is a UN64, and, a, and we call the type summing merge tree. So this is the simplest table that can store results from aggregations. Uh, and we order by project. And a summing merge tree, all a summing merge tree does is when it gets two rows with the same order by key, it will deduplicate them, and it will take the numeric columns in that the table and sum them. Okay, that's all it's doing. So it's a simplified version. You can there's some additional syntax to control which columns actually get summed, uh, but I think it's I are some cases for it. But typically, this is just the kind of default behavior. So what does that look like? Well, we get some more rows in, another row in, executes against the, the, the query. And we get the count, uh, the new rows inserted. Now, obviously, rows are not inserted one by one. We often get blocks of rows. Again, they go into the main table, they get aggregated, and then they go down into the PyPy downloads table. And this is where the summing merge tree behavior comes in. So we have the counts. Now, those two need to be merged together. If you're familiar with ClickHouse, they're parts on disk that are now going to get merged by a merge cycle. And when it merges, it deduplicates and adds the counts together for us. So. Uh, here's a more varied case, final case, goes down and sums it up and we get our final count. So the difference here is I actually just put in 65 billion rows here, which is about 14 terabytes uncompressed. The full data set is I think 140 terabytes, uh, 130 terabytes uncompressed, and it's about 10 terabytes in ClickHouse. So it's 10x this, this is not just three months worth. And it's kind of going up at a, a faster rate than historic. Obviously, people are using Python more and more. Um, and then we've got our table on the right is now four megabytes compressed and 500,000 rows. So what I'm actually, the objective here, which I probably should have said at the start, 
was to identify with that count what are the most popular Python packages uh, that are downloaded. I'm sure people can guess what probably the top three are. I was a little bit surprised. Um, the top three, uh, I'm surprised setup tools is actually sick. I would have thought that would be fairly essential, but Botto3, AWS library, and then you've got the, the foundational libraries, which a lot of us will be familiar with, URL, lib3, and request. So uh, how much faster does this actually look like in reality? Well, the differences are probably best shown through a demo. So I'm just going to do a quick, I can find my cursor. OK, I'm going to spin this round. It's a little bit easier when I can actually see what I'm doing. So before I show the actual differences in the table, hopefully I've got an internet connection. So you can see the PyPy table is 69 billion rows. Downloads is 500, 500,000 rows, 4 megabytes. There's quite a dramatic difference in our storage overhead there. Um, this query would be kind of the equivalent to perform this query on the actual base table. So if I ran this on the base table, I'm doing a count by project and putting it into a readable format. There's uh, some settings here I'm using to actually, this is a three node cluster, so this could actually just be three, uh, whether it's four, I think it's maybe a four node cluster or a three node cluster. Uh, and the, the nodes are all replicas. So the work here, this is a full table scan, there's no filters, this work has to be distributed across the entire cluster. Uh, and we get about 100 gig a second, which is pretty good. It needs to scan all of the rows linearly. So we'll get a response time, which is probably in the order of 10 to 12 seconds. There you go, 13 seconds, that's not bad. So the, the materialized view itself, you can that's the materialized view I created, and that's my downloads table. Now if I modify that query, I need to make one small modification to this query. So. Um, I've now got a count column. Now, all of that merging that I talked about may not be complete, so we have to rewrite our queries just to do a sum of that count column, just in case there are some duplicate rows. And then the performance on that is 0 0.62, and if it's warm, 0 0.75. So it's about, I think it's about 250 times faster. Um, another one which might be quite similar is more, more realistic. Um, is what are the top Python versions for, say, the request package. Again, this is actually filtered. This is filtering on the order key on the main table. It still takes three seconds. Now, three seconds, you might say that's quite fast. It's had to scan. That's the, one of the most popular libraries, so it has 100 million rows. But if we are grouping here, sorry, we're grouping here by date, by week, and by Python version. So you can imagine that would kind of be a multi-series line chart that we would want to plot, where we show the Python versions over time, uh, let's take three seconds. I, I don't think that's probably fast enough to build an app. Like if you've got lots of people querying, that's just not gonna be fast enough. Uh, you can see it's a little bit more complicated. We have a, some string functions to just take the minor and the major version, uh, but it's pretty much the same, an aggregation, and we're aggregating by project and day. Uh, on the same query on a materialized view, on a, which is on that materialized view, takes half a second. So that's kind of order of 10x, maybe even maybe even 100x once the, once the table's hot, uh, speed up. OK? So uh, that's kind of the principle. Now, there's a few considerations here. So uh, oh, sorry. Now I should show what this actually looks like. So let's see if I can bring this up. Bring this across. So what I'll actually kind of arrive at what we wanted to actually show. don't think it's going to allow me to bring the browser across. Ah, here we go. So this is the, the data set, the uh, original data set, if you're interested. Now, um, you can imagine this is kind of what you can do with these materialized views. So this is needs some work, I think. I mean, this is not as interesting as I hoped it would be in terms of these are the top packages. Uh, but we also have autocomplete, which is powered by materialized views. So if we looked at requests, for example, uh, we can start seeing all of these are materialized view. So every visualization here, and I can filter by time if I wanted to. All of this is just powered by a different materialized view. I could filter by country if I want to. This is the request package. Um, now, so this is kind of where it gets a little bit trickier because when I'm building this application, I then need to I get into this situation whereby every visualization, if I want to be able to filter by every visualization, 
every materialized view needs the same columns to be able to filter by them. So I get this problem where eventually I keep aggregating and I get more and more materialized views and I kind of get back to the base table. Um, is that kind of, that should be a, a kind of fairly, I'll talk about it a little bit more here. But um, the challenge there is, is this. So we, we're basically doing a lot of sums here. Now, uh, this is kind of this is a problem that I'm alluding to here, that with, with applications with many filters, you can't have a column in every materialized view because at some point you just end up with the original table. So this is one of the real advantages of projections, which are more, they are generally available in ClickHouse, but they have some limitations in, with respect to materialized views, and we can talk about those. Um, but what I actually have to do here is effectively identify the minimum materialized view that I need. Because as I have bigger and bigger materialized views, that they get bigger and effectively they get slower. Like the target table has more rows in it, there's more columns, the data, the queries get slower. So what I, for this particular instance and some other apps that we've, we, we've been building for, for people and for ourselves, um, we effectively try to identify the materialized view with the fewest, uh, with, the, with the tightest column match, basically. So like what is the actual, what is the view that has the, the smallest subset of those columns? Uh, and eventually you revert to the base table. Now, you might be concerned if you have to revert to the base table, but by that point you've got so many filters, there should be enough filters to deliver good query performance anyway because you're applying so many filters on the table. So at that point you no longer need the materialized view. So we have this kind of cascading effect. Now, um, some of the, the, the key advantages of projections is that if we were to declare these groupings as projections on our table, ClickHouse will automatically try to infer which is the best projection for you. So it will do that for you. But with projections, you have some things that you can't do. So for example, you can't do joins in projections. You can't do filters in projections. Um, I don't think they're particularly robust with deletes and updates at this point. So that's something that you should be aware of. Um, and also you are often, the, I mean, I would generally advise, unless you are at a point whereby you need to do a complete reordering of the base table, we generally advise to use materialized views. So unless you need to change the ordering key completely and have an alternative ordering key on the base table, we generally lean towards materialized views in most cases. Um, so this has been a pretty simple example. We've just used a summing merge tree for these particular cases. As I said, we're just doing counts. But you can do more complex things, so you can do pretty much any aggregation, can be its results can be stored in a table. Now, when you're introducing things like averages and percentiles, then we actually have to store sketches, and that needs a slightly different table engine called the aggregating uh, merge tree, and that needs a little bit more careful config configuration. Um, now, this is just one of many tools for speeding up queries. Uh, always optimize your schema first and your ordering key. Always rewrite your queries. We do now support MySQL syntax as of 23.7, so you can use pretty much all MySQL syntax. But always rewrite your queries if you can using ClickHouse syntax because typically they're sl they are more optimized and they'll actually be more succinct as well in most cases. But I said you can consider projections and I think there's a great presentation on Cloudflare. Uh, one other app which I was just like tinkering with, uh, which I started building yesterday was plotting flight data. So this particular actually, I, there is materialized views. This is all flights they're streaming in in the world right now. And this is kind of interesting because it uses both dictionaries and materialized views. Um, and the reason that and this, this is open sky data, you can sign up to this and stream this data in. But what effectively you need to do is try and figure out which flights are in the air at any one time. So the most efficient way that we found to do this was use a materialized view to compute what's the latest time that an aircraft was on the ground, what was the latest time that an aircraft was in the air, have two materialized views capturing those two states, then put a dictionary on top of those materialized views to give you the latest time on which you can just easily do the query to go and get the latest time for each flight, and you can just go and get the points for each aircraft with just a simple dict get less than uh, on ground or less greater than on ground, less than in the air, and you've got the full um, the full flight history of the data. So I can show that query. It's it, it, it's it's a quite a nice query, but that allows us to do uh, some pretty th some pretty interesting stuff. So uh, this actually even uses some a few more interesting things, which is. Uh, I'm not the, hopefully that will work. 
uh, I come from Portugal, so this is a nice um, example of the flights coming out of Portugal. And this even actually uses a geo dictionary, which I don't think we talked about, but it's basically encoding uh, latitude and longitudes into a dictionary for a fast lookup. So all of these, this is also powered by materialized views. So hopefully that gives you some inspiration. Thank you.